Hey everyone, today we're coming back into the real world after last week's exploration of Lord of the Rings. Today we're going back to the USA to have a look at Los Angeles. I got a couple of maps from a subscriber from Dave including a cute little postcard of one of the neighborhoods, Eagle Rock. And these two maps of Hollywood. Los Angeles is kind of an interesting city because I feel like we're all familiar with it and we all know the names of so many of its neighborhoods but I'm not sure that I could name a lot of landmarks apart from the Hollywood sign But chances are I've probably seen a great part of the city just through movies and TV series that are placed somewhere here. So just as a little overview, we're here along the coastline in Southern California on the west coast of America. Downtown or the old center of Los Angeles located here on the right hand side of the map. And to the north we have here Hollywood the Hollywood sign. Towards the west side we come to Beverly Hills and Bel Air, which we'll see on another map. Two famous neighborhoods. North we have the valley. And you can see here that the terrain gets a little steeper. We have a lot of hills and mountains here. When we go towards the beach, we have Santa Monica and Venice Beach. There's the airport here. LAX. And then the city continues southwards along the coastline. I really like this map, by the way. I think the color scheme is really, really cute. And here we have a bucket list of places to visit, which are probably the most famous sites, so there's more than just the Hollywood sign. A and B on this list are the Warner Brothers Studios and the Universal Studios. A and B. And the Hollywood sign's actually here, rather than over there. There's an observatory here and the Hollywood Walk of Fame. Now further west we have the Getty Center and here G is the Academy Museum of Motion Pictures. And H, I actually had to look that one up, 
Maria Tar Pits. It's exactly what it sounds like. These are tar pits um, with some excavation sites. So you can have a look at the flora and fauna of the distant past. I have the Venice Canals and J are the Watts Towers. This one I had to look up as well. They were created by Sabato Rodia, an American Italian artist between the 1920s and 1950s. And it's an art style called Arpu, which it could translate to like naive art. So the idea that as an artist, you're not exposed to theory, you're not exposed to kind of the discourse going on in the art world. You just create kind of raw art that, I don't know, comes to you, uh, that you're inspired to make. So this is Canada's Arbre. Here we have Bel Air next to the Getty Museum. And one thing I want to point out here on this map We have here a connection from Santa Monica Pier All the way to the downtown area With the skyline And that's about 15 miles, so it's not as close as it appears. It takes on average 40 minutes by car, so it's definitely not a short walk. I think Los Angeles in general has a reputation of being a city with a lot of sprawl. When I think of places like Bel Air or Beverly Hills, I have an image of a city with very little density so everyone has a lot of space and big houses and gardens but of course this would be unique to this area here while Los Angeles really is a very very large city um, that connects to the surrounding areas so you have a metropolitan area of 12-15 million people. The city itself actually has a high density, so there are many people living in small space. And I think that kind of goes counter to the image that we have of LA. It is nonetheless not really a walkable city, in terms of density, you can compare it to like some European cities, but the walkability, of course, is very different. There are some areas that are nice to walk, but all in all, LA really focuses on mobility by car, but we'll get to that in a moment. Before we move to one of the other maps, I just want to show you one more. Uh, landmark that I think we've all seen before and that's the LA River right here the river runs in a concrete canal and you've probably seen it in a movie or in a series I'm familiar with it from the Terminator movies um, there's, for example, also a famous scene in Greece. And 
there are um, plans to revitalize the river, to renaturalize it, but it's not possible to completely take it out of this concrete bed since it's also a protection against uh, floods. Before we have a look at the center, let's have a look at the larger area here. Metropolitan LA. So we've just looked pretty much at this part here. From San Pedro Bay, Long Beach Harbor, and Santa Monica Bay here, past the Getty Center to the Hollywood Hills, and then we move down past downtown LA. What you can see here, in fact, let's get the brush. What you can see here is that LA is kind of settled right next to the mountains. You have the Santa Monica Mountains on one side and the San Gabriel Mountains on the other, with some smaller ranges in between. And further north, there's the Santa Susana Mountains and the Simi Hills in between. Two important names here are also the San Fernando Valley. And where's the second one? the San Gabriel Valley. These are two names that go back to the origins of Los Angeles. The area was populated before. The Tongue people moved in probably three and a half thousand years ago and established about a hundred villages in the larger area. And they were quite well off. This is a great climate to live. And they had an extensive trading network. So lots of connections further across the land. And linguistically, they were related to the peoples of Mesoamerica. They spoke an Uto Aztecan language. You might remember that one from the Mesoamerican Sprachbund. The first encounter they had with Europeans was in the middle of the 16th century when Spaniards arrived by boat. But it took about 200 years until the Spaniards then arrived by land and established two missions, one called San Gabriel and one called San Fernando. And mission has a bit of a positive connotation, but in this case, it's really quite a negative one. The Tanghai people were forced into labor for these missions under quite a brutal regime with a lot of suppression that tried to eradicate their language, their cultural identity. And that lasted for a couple of decades until 1835 when Mexico became independent. 
the missions then were secularized. But for the indigenous people, for the Tongwai, that meant they still had a huge problem because they were landless after that. They didn't have access to land. And it remained like that, unfortunately, also when this area came to the US. Today there are four organizations with about 4,000 members and they're still fighting for federal recognition and access to their ancestral homelands. One of their villages, by the way, was here, roughly where downtown Los Angeles is located today. And we can have a look at that on the official visitors map. There's a side with downtown LA. Let's see if we can find that. Just put the candles to the side for a second. of the original village is a bit difficult to uh, point out. Um, people were dislocated, they had to move, places were erased. But one place we know, um, which LA kind of grew from, was something called El Pueblo. Or the full name was El Pueblo de Nuestra Señora de Reina de Los Angeles. So, our lady queen of the angels and the last part would become the name of the city pueblo uh, dates back to the spanish period they would establish missionaries forts and pueblos and there was basically a civilian part there were certain regulations about how much cattle you had to have how many chickens how much land was allocated to these pueblos. And basically, one was here, close to these missions. There's still a historical monument that you can visit. And you can see a little bit of the plaza that was created at the time. You kind of get an idea of sort of this origin of this huge city in this place here next to the Hollywood Freeway. I think we might also have. Right, we also have some info here. So there's the Hollywood Freeway and the Santa Ana Freeway. And we have LA Plaza, La Placita Church, Paseo de la Plaza. But we can't see the monument here, that's only on this map. LA kind of began to grow relatively late but because of its climate and the California gold rush it attracted a lot of people and names like Bel Air give you an idea of what they were seeking sort of fresh air, health, wellness and that's also part of why the city spread out the way it did but you do have a historic downtown. Let's 
And it gives us a bit of an idea here of the we have one prominent office buildings civic and institutional buildings, culture, entertainment, shopping, and then hotels and clubs. So I guess if you're a tourist, the most interesting one would be the orange category, culture, entertainment, and shopping. But I feel like there's lots of different things put together under this category. There's obviously this historic, area we just looked at, then plenty of religious institutions like a Buddhist temple, Union Church, a Buddhist mission, there's a Catholic church, a Japanese Catholic church, and another temple, but you also have plenty of theatres, the Regent Theatre, the Million Dollar Theatre, we have a School of Performing Arts, Museum of Contemporary Art, and then also a Market Centre, or a Whole Foods. There's some info on the public transport system, which does exist. Uh, there's obviously some very busy stations, like the Union Station right here. But I had a look at this and I thought the, um, the Metro Alliance don't have the greatest intervals for a city that's this big. For example, the line D runs every six minutes on weekdays from 6 a.m. to 9 p.m., on Saturdays every 10 minutes, and on Sundays every 15 minutes from 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. That's really not that long. If I wanted to go out on a Saturday evening, I guess I'd have to take a taxi to get back home. And I do think a lot of people are dependent on transportation before 6 a.m. as well. So I don't know if this is maybe incomplete information, but I guess it's part of the reason a lot of people are dependent on cars. And if you look at the back here once again, you do have these rail connections across the city from Long Beach, for example, to downtown LA, or here east to west, Paramount to Hawthorne. This is the one we've already seen from Santa Monica to downtown LA. We have a gold line from Montebello up to Pasadena and Glendora. And the red line here through Hollywood, through the hills, then turning into an orange line at Pierce College and Canoga Park. There's one more thing I want to show you about the historic center that kind of really stands out when you look at a larger map. See if we can open this completely. There we go. So, 
One thing you'll notice if you look at these different parts of LA is the grid throughout every part of the city. Not well, pretty much every part. So the streets run north, south, and east, west, with some exceptions like here in Palos Verdes estates. They tilt a little around Santa Monica Boulevard and Venice Boulevard. But they're completely straight again here. straight line all the way north. But then look at what happens here. Where we get to the historic center, the entire grid tilts by 45 degrees. And that's part of the historical layout that was created here. So you had this piece of land that was given to the Pueblo, where you still have the outline, and they created their grid at a 45 degree angle, which still persists today. here again you have plenty of places worth visiting from all the different studios, theatres, museums. So a city with plenty to see and visit. like I said, also with a lot of traffic and I think that's particularly noticeable when you look at this historic center here and you see that it is surrounded by freeways the Hollywood Freeway, Harbour Freeway and Santa Monica Freeway I saw someone mention though that Los Angeles is in a really good position, a quite fortunate position. You have good weather year round. So if the city decides to invest in um, cycling infrastructure, could probably get a lot of people to switch to bikes and that would really help with the traffic issue. And then maybe these cute little neighborhoods wouldn't have all these trucks mm -hmm. here on the side. Look at that huge intersection. I mean, I guess that's uh, very European that I'm always kind of blown away by these huge structures. We don't really have that here. But then, basically the amount of people that live in Los Angeles County 
that's the same number as all the people living in my country, so everything's a bit smaller here. There's one on Hollywood tours. You can visit the sets of different TV shows, like the Central Park Cafe, Film Friends, there's Batman and Harry Potter, The Wizarding World. And you can actually go for a nice stroll here. Between Sunset Boulevard and Hollywood Boulevard to the north. like you can go from one attraction to the next. You do have a metro station here, Hollywood slash Highland, or Hollywood slash of the All Access Pass for the Guinness World Records Museum, which is right here, across from the Wax Museum. And there's another Madame Tussauds. It's a state of mind, a fantasy, an industry, but also a place nestled at the foot of the Hollywood Hills and just six miles from downtown Los Angeles. I think that's actually quite a fair way. It is densely populated. You have plenty of cultural treasures. As I see, it's a walkable neighborhood, which is arguably the busiest pedestrian thoroughfare in all of Los Angeles. And in the past 20 years, Hollywood has transformed with abundant new resident units, office towers, exciting and unique retail experiences, and creative cuisine are all while retaining the eclectic energy of old Hollywood in its historic core. It also says safe nightlife, easy access public transport, we've seen that. And it says here, it's become a business improvement district which is funded by over 600 property owners who assess themselves 7.4 million a year to provide enhanced street cleaning, security services, beautification, homeless outreach, events and programming. I think that's an interesting aspect of the city. And I 
think it's kind of interesting to see how the city is going to develop. Because looking at it like this, I do think it looks really inviting with plenty of beautiful places. But of course, traffic's an issue. I think uh, housing and availability of housing might be an issue. The Los Angeles River and its concrete bed are an interesting aspect. So, I've been trying to find a little bit on urban planning and sort of city development for Los Angeles, but I haven't been very successful yet. If you know a good source, do let me know. I'd love to learn more about this. But for today, I think we've learned enough. The candles have dissolved these little cacti already. So I think it's time to blow them out and to drift off to sleep. Thank you for spending the time with me and I'll see you again next week.